Hey guys, Jason here. This is a Head First Modded Studio Classic 20, the Marshall Studio Series. Uh, I've had this in here for about a week. I featured it on the last video where it was uh, unmolested stock, if you like, um, and did a comparison of the stock, the stock JCM 800 Studio against uh, the Origin 20. Um, so through the week, I've completed our mods on this. It's, I've taken the JCM800 base and kind of added, you know, what I have referred to as the greatest hits of 800 mods. Um, certainly increased the usable gain uh, in the circuit, and we've also included um, a three-way Jose diode clipping switch. I've added to the rear of the chassis. It's a three-way switch. Um, if you follow the channel, you've seen I've done this a few times now, right? So, middle position, there's no clipping, and then we've got two different options. Um, what you heard at the beginning of the clip is a comparison of uh, the tones of the modded amp with no clipping, so that's the kind of, let's call it the stock sound now, compared to uh, the amp uh, as I received it last week, the stock amp. Um, and um, also kind of the same setting with no clipping uh, with the Nags guitar, so kind of more of a uh, Les Paul kind of tone there. Okay guys, I've now moved the amp into the first clipping mode. Um, I brought the master volume up just a little bit to compensate for the fact that when you put the, the Jose diodes on, you do lose a little bit of volume, so that's come up. Everything else on the front panel uh, is the same, and here is our core tone. second clipping and first is this is asymmetric clipping as opposed to symmetric clipping if you want to know what that is I suggest you look up uh, my video on Xena diode clipping and uh, how that works inside tube amps I uh, posted that quite recently um, and that's all explained in there so this is the asymmetric clipping it's a bit of a it's a different tonal variation it, it's got a bit more teeth uh, to it slightly more compressed and it sounds like this <laughs> second half of the video I'm going to explain what mods have been done to this um, and how to do them yourself. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Cheers guys, I'll see you next time. Alright guys, so from a schematic perspective, again if you've been following the channel you would have seen this. I've just tidied it up um, for the exact mods that I have made to the Studio Classic 20. This schematic here sets all that out, except for the diode clipping, which I'll actually show next. But I just wanted to show this in two parts because you might not want to progress to the diode clipping. You might just want to make these changes to uh, mod the core tone or the standard tone of the amp to more of this kind of you know hot rodded 
uh, JCM 800. This is kind of the J. Key Lee style um, 800, right? So very quickly, there's only you know four or five changes to make. It's quite a simple mod. It's a lot easier than the Origin 20 because you do not need to reroute anything. The JCM 800, the Studio Classic, is already kind of set up, obviously, as an 800. Whereas with this, with the Origin, that mod requires reconfiguring the amp uh, to get a core JCM 800 circuit, 2204, before you then make a few changes. So, uh, quite simply, this is a 22 nanofarad in the stock amp. We changed that to, to 2.2 nanofarad. That's the control. Uh, the bottom end going through the preamp, the base going through the preamp. We change the 10K here uh, to a 2K7 with a 0.68 microfarad bypass cap. On the uh, cathode resistor for the third gain stage, we add a 22 microfarad cap. These are all, both of these are electrolytic caps. You'll see in the pictures, right, when I show it. And on the cathode of the uh, cathode follower, which is driving the tone stack, um, we've got a 470 picofarad here to ground, which just rolls off a bit of top end from the amp. Um, and finally, here is a fixed depth circuit, right? So it's not tied to a pot, so it's kind of you know set and forget, right? But 220k with a 4.7 nanofarad um, cap. I use a ceramic cap in this case. Um, this is a nice kind of fixed depth and you know it's pretty much the uh, the sweet spot there. This uh, this schematic I actually sh detailed this in my last video um, regarding mods to I think to 2204 I showed this. Um, what we've got here is a three-way Jose diode clipping switch right so if you just refer quickly back to the stock schematic you can see that uh, coming off V2, B, right, the second triode on V2, this is a cathode follower, right, so it's 100k resistor to ground, and then the tone stack, treble, bass, middle pots, the three pots, they connect straight on to this cathode, right, this is the anode, this is the cathode. Now, what you need to do with Jose clipping diodes, Zener diodes, is you need to kind of get them in here, you need to insert them in here. So if you look at this schematic, this is kind of how we do it, right? Um, this is the best way to do it uh, when you're keeping your master pot, the, you know, the master volume for the amp, after the tone stack, which is here. Okay, now if you've studied your Jose mods and you know, you know what's going on there, you'll know that some of them have the master volume sitting in here called a pre-tone stack master. Um, Pete Thorne details this. He's featured a couple of Jose amps now. Um, Steve Vai one, which was selectable to have a pre-tone stack master. And I think more recently, the Mick Mars Richard, uh, Richard Fortas amp uh, has the post-tone stack master. So anyway, this is kind of how you want to do it, right? So you need to get a 10K resistor and a, and a cap here off this cathode filer and then you can the 220k resistor is what I used you can kind of play with this value here depending on how much compression you want up to one meg um, and I've got symmetric clipping here two 20 volt zeners back to back and this is a 24 volt and a 5.1 volt so this is my asymmetric clipping tone which I featured um, in uh, earlier part of the video. So what we'll do now is just I'll step through a bunch of pictures right so kind of before, during and after. So hopefully the pictures give uh, an idea of how to kind of imp implement um, these mods. It's one thing to look at the schematic, it's another thing entirely to try and kind of shoehorn these things into an existing amp. This is the Studio Classic 20 right out of its head shell. Um, so yeah let's go so this is the stock pcb um, without any changes i've just got a couple of pictures here to kind of run through this is kind of how the amp is when you first pull it out of the head shell um, unmolested no changes interestingly this is a cathode bias el34 amp right 
Um, these are the cathode resistors here actually, these big kind of 150, 150 ohm 5 watt um, resistors. So uh, let's continue on. Um, that's just more stock photos. And this is how you can mod it, right? So you don't have to pull the whole board out on this. So with the Origin 20 mod, you, if, you've, if you've had a look at that, I kind of have to pull the whole board out because you really got to get right underneath it. What I found with this, the um, Studio Classic, is that if you pull, obviously you've got to you know, unscrew it. There's a bunch of uh, bolts that um, bolt this to the chassis. You've got to unscrew the uh, retainers on the power tube sockets here from the other side of the chassis, so on the top side, you unscrew all that, and then the single lift out. If you pull these um, terminals here, and a couple of these uh, terminals here, you pull them out, just on this side of the board, you'll be able to lift it up. Um, I mean, you can pull the whole thing out if you want to, right? But, um, you know, one might make more work than you need to. And you, you, know, you can see, right, with that stuff pulled out, from this side of the board, uh, access underneath is, is, is adequate, right? It's fine to do these simple mods. And here's the first one, C33, you need to pull that out. That's a 22 nanofarad in the stock amp. And here I've got uh, a 2.2 nanofarad coupling cap in its place. This thing um, is knocking some uh, of the bottom end out of the preamp in the early stages. R33 is the, this is normally a 10K resistor. It's, a, it's the cathode of the second gain stage. The 2K7, um, a 2K7 resistor with a 0.68 uh, microfarad bypass cap, right? So you can just wire it in there. In terms of getting this, the existing um, components out, I got them out from underneath the board, right? So because I had the board flipped up, I, I could use um, my solder sucker and soldering iron to kind of gently lift out the existing components. Alternatively, you can just get your clippers, right, and just cut them out and then heat up the pad and pull out the uh, pull out the remaining leg with your with um uh, with some pliers. But yeah, getting underneath is fine. Okay, this is the 22 microfarad. This is sitting on top of the 820 ohm resistor, which is the cathode of the third gain stage. It's really easy, right? You just slot this in, pull the legs around, and solder it in there. You can just do it straight from the top of the board. You don't even need to get underneath it. And here I've got a 470 picofarad uh, cap, which is on the 100K uh, resistor, which is the... Uh, cathode resistor for the cathode follower V2B. So this is just knocking some top end off, um, a high end uh, out of the amp and sending, sending it to ground to remove some harshness. Um, and finally, these this is the final uh, mod for just the hot rod at 800. This resistor here um, is uh, this is the uh, negative feedback resistor, right? So um, you can see, well, I apologize, I can't quite see the reference here. If you've got the board, you can see it, right? It's right next to C53 here. Um, apologies for that. Um, I lift, you lift one leg of it, the bottom leg here, okay? Leave this one alone, lift it up. Here you've got the yeah, 220K resistor with the 4.7 nanofarad uh, cap. This is a ceramic cap. And so that inserts in there and then connects to the free leg of, uh, that's a 100K resistor there. And now you've got your depth circuit in place. Um, all right, so here is the board with all the mods in. So you know, here's the um, first coupling cap the new cathode setup for V1B, uh, the 22 microfarad fat cap. On the third gain stage, there's the 470 picofarad on the 100K um, cathode resistor for the cathode follower. Um, and finally, here over here is the, um, uh, the fixed depth 220K resistor with the 
7 nanofarad and it looks like if I can read that correctly it looks like R20 all right so you can kind of just do this right if there's a bunch of simple mods you could leave the amp like that and you've heard the tones at the beginning of the clip what it sounds like just with no Xena clipping diode so this is a pretty easy mod um, if you're searching for a bit more of a hot rodded um, bass tone for your studio classic 20. Right, so moving on and implementing the uh, Jose Xena clipping diodes is um, a little bit more difficult, right? So this is kind of, in terms of complexity, it's the next level up. Um, certainly achievable, but not as easy as the first set of mods that we just went through. So you need to actually pull, the, there's a PCB sitting behind these pots here, right? They're all PCB mounted pots. You need to get that PCB out, right? So pull all of the knobs out and unscrew all of these nuts here and you'll be able to pull the board out like this, right? And the uh, caps and resistors and so on for the tone stack are actually on this PCB. And if you remember the schematic that we went through um, at the beginning of this section of the clip, you've got to get the Xena clipping diodes inserted kind of before this tone stack in the circuit, right? So, um, Analyzing this, I decided that the easiest way to do it, probably the only way to do it actually, was to mount my um, Jose clipping, well, some components of the Jose clipping um, circuit here on this PCB. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to break this track or cut this uh, PCB track between these two pads here, right? So um, just orientate yourself on the board here um, this is the presence pot right here. Okay, this is the base pot. This is the middle and this is the treble pot. Um, and this is the header that kind of you know plugs into the board. So this picture should be clear. The reason we need to do this is we need to, um, I want to use one of these pads to mount some of the new components. And I also need to break the link between um, uh, where it comes off the cathode follower and hits the tone stack because as you remember from the schematic I've got to insert um, the 10k resistor and I'm using a 0.47 microfarad cap there as well so yeah it's that's a little bit you know destructive but you know, trust me, it's the only way to do it if you want to add the Jose clipping option in. It's reversible, of course. If you want to take all that stuff out, you can just link these across again with a piece of wire um, and no damage done. So here, I'm trying to illustrate just with these pictures how I've done it, right? So this is the um, 470 picofarad cap that goes to the treble pot for the tone stack. This is the 33K slope resistor, and I pulled them both out of the pads that they were in. Okay, so on this side, they left unchanged. On the other side, I pulled them out of the pads. Um, and the reason I've done that is because this uh, 0.47 microfarad is sitting in the, uh, the pad where the um, slope resistor, the 33k resistor was, and I'm using that just to anchor it. Remember I cut the track here? Right, and I need to find a way of anchoring this on, onto the amp, so I'm using that pad to solder that leg in. So this track here, that's coming from the, the cathode follower, you know, the 100k resistor to ground, and we see in the schematic, right, I'll just flip back to it quickly. Um, What's happening in the stock amp is this 100k resistor to ground, it comes in and it joins on to that 470 picofarad, that disc capacitor and the 33k slope resistor. And of course, I've got to insert these things before it gets there. Okay, so coming back to where we were, uh, here we go. This is the feed from the cathode follower and so by lifting the leg of that 470 picofarad, 
I'm able to put my 10K resistor in here. It's soldered to one side of this 0.47 microfarad uh, cap, which then goes to the pad here, which is isolated now because it's not connected to anything. Okay, and then on this leg of the cap, I've just run both this side of the resistor and this side of the cap to that uh, leg that's still, you know, it's kind of poking through the pad and I can just kind of solder those in uh, like so. So that gives me the 10K resistor and the cap sitting in line, in series, uh, before it goes to the tone stack. The next thing you need to do is get the Xena diodes in there. Okay, so here is some shielded coax and I have soldered that into that point there because remember the schematic, what I need to do, I'll flip back to it for a second, is after the cap and where it joins on to the tone stack, I need to run across to the switch, which is I'm going to mount these Zeta diodes and this resistor here to the switch, but I need to create this link here. And I'm doing that with that um, shielded coax. So before you put this PCB away, or remount it, right? I've got um, the signal wire of the coax soldered into that pad there on the, you know, underneath the board. And I've used some heat shrink just to, um, uh, you know, to get rid of the, um, the shield because I'm going to ground it on the other side of the coax here. The reason we ground it, of course, is to um, protect the signal from any noise. So here you can kind of see, now that the PCB, PCB is back in, it's, it's, it's reasonably tidy, right? So it's, there's the cap, there's the 10K uh, resistor, it's mounted in there and, and pretty secure. Um, and I didn't have to change any of this stuff, right? So um, all of your, your headers and plugs and so on just work without any change. And um, uh, the owner of the SAMP wanted the uh, diode clipping switch on the rear of the amp, which is what I've done, which is why I ran this coax, you know, kind of a quite long piece of coax underneath the board here to the switch. This other wire here is a ground, and I'll show you on the next picture where I took this ground from, right? So if you remember the schematic again, I'll flip to it quickly. You need to get a ground reference onto the switch here, okay? So I've done that. Um, with this black wire here and this is the coax it comes in um, here's the signal and here's the ground and I've got the ground set to the middle pin of the switch which is where this ground connects to okay and underneath the heat shrink here are the two Zeno diodes and likewise on the other side of the switch two Zeno diodes right so you know 20 volt 20 volt and 5.1 and 24 volt in this amp. These are just another view of it. So two zenas here, two zenas there. They all connect together. The signal wire of this coax connects to here. I've got the ground of this coax connected to that middle pin, which is also which is grounded by this black wire. And uh, the black wire, which is a ground wire, it comes up here. I've used the ground point of the second cathode resistor, okay? Um, you could probably choose other ground points, but I, I just that was you know, pretty convenient and I was pretty confident that by using that point there in the amp, I wouldn't be introducing any risk of kind of ground hum uh, and so on, and it's fine. So take your ground from there. The shielded coax you can see underneath the board, it, it comes up here and connects into underneath this PCB as, um, you saw before and finally here's the rear of the amp so here's a three position switch right so middle is no clipping and then we've got the two options on either side um, okay guys i hope this is helpful um, it's probably pretty clear that the the core 800 mods without the Xena diode clipping um, is a pretty easy mod right um, you know if, you, if you're new to doing this it's not a bad place to start it's, it's quite straightforward doing the Xena clipping look it's possible um, didn't take that long, a little bit more complex. Um, if you do have any issues with it, just um, do reach out to me and um, join our 
uh, Facebook DIY Builders Group, the Head First DIY Builders Group. There's over 300 people on that group now. And um, if you've got questions and so on, join the group, post your questions up there, and myself and others will jump in and help out.